tear it down. <laughs> like take it. So the reason it's called uh, winter break instead of like um, Christmas break is because uh, we have to really um, take in consideration of uh, the other like cultures and um, religions of everyone else. And uh, I think it's really important that we um, really consider what's going on in uh, other people's lives. What to do? Well, the reason that we have winter break and not Christmas break is so we can take the time to appreciate other religions and have them express their different differentiation in culture. And we also give them time to do what we do, whether we celebrate Christmas or not. We also give them time to do whatever they want to do. Next subject is pacing. What not to do? Well, you see, when I went there and then something else happened and I had to go, so I went to McDonald's and then I had to get a cheeseburger because I was very, 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 very hungry. And then I went back because I was still very, very, very hungry. I wasn't full, but um, I had a good Thanksgiving. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? I, do you know what I'm saying? Because I, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. I mean, I'm talking really slow for you. I'm trying to say everything for you the way you need to understand it, pretty much. So, I don't know why you're not understanding What it. to do? So, over Thanksgiving, I really enjoyed a nice meal with my family, and we, um, <laughs> had turkey and biscuits and sweet tea and other southern foods and I got to listen to my uncles tell me how ice vanilla ice is the best rapper there ever has been and that was really my Thanksgiving what about yours language what not to do so I was going over to the market and I had to find like some sort of pig for my family to eat for the holidays I mean what kind of is that I mean really that's a bunch of bull and I personally don't really understand why this kind of keeps happening to me so overall that's why I think Thanksgiving is the worst holiday what to do well see what happened was everything was just a piece of everything was some crap everything could have been better I mean I'm trying not to use bad language. I mean, I'm trying to just let this this stuff not get me stressed out because I don't want to be stressed out over break. I mean, I need time for myself. You understand that? Hi, we hope you enjoyed our video. In conclusion, we have some tips for verbal fillers, pacing, and language as you gave your speech. First, we want to talk about verbal fillers. With verbal fillers, um, keep in mind that using things like um, like, or uh, usually doesn't help your audience. They get can get distracted. They can think less of you. Overall, it's easier to take pauses when trying to think of what to say and really give yourself a moment. Pacing. As far as pacing goes, you don't want to talk like this. You don't want to talk just like this because you know what? Nobody's going to understand what I'm saying. I don't understand what I'm saying. She doesn't understand what I'm saying. What? Do you? See? So take your time, be clear, enunciate, so your audience can understand what you're saying. And everything will flow just fine in your speech. Just fine. Low end. Next we're going to talk about language. Just keep in mind that your language does need to be pro appropriate for the setting that you're in and the audience. Using naughty words <laughs> can be distracting and inappropriate in most settings. And if you, if you find yourself that you can't get over your potty mouth like Claudia can. Just use um, filler words. Um, or, no, not verbal fillers, <laughs> filler words. Like, or you can just say something that was really irritable, irritating. Or you can be as intelligent as Claudia. <laughs> use a thesaurus <laughs> and help yourself. Bye. Bye. So now we're going to give you some tips on avoiding vocal fillers. Um, one thing is that speakers tend to be most nervous at the beginning of their speeches. So a helpful tent w tip would be to be really, really detailed on your introduction and transitional points. So that way the moments that you're most likely to panic, you have more written out so you don't have to wing it. Another tip would be um, practicing your speech numerous times a day. Um, will make you become more familiar with your with your topic and it will decrease the amount of time that you need to process the next bit of information. So when you pause, you won't be lost, you won't fumble to find the words, you know exactly what you need to talk about. 
Remember that silence is okay. Um, it occurs when speakers are processing the next bit of information. And um, it may seem like the silence is really long, but it's only like a couple seconds. So it's okay. And a last tip is that if you find yourself, if you find that you can't get over your verbal fillers, sit down with a friend, practice, and have them tell you if you use verbal fillers, and then you can calculate how many verbal fillers you use, and then hopefully lessen each le lessen the amount each time you practice. And if you have any more questions, uh, go to the University Speaking Center located in the MHRA, and the consultants will be glad to help you. Room 3211.